Oh, you're actually walking in. Did I just get sunned by Sean Desmond? You did. That's kind of hot, I'm not gonna lie. Oh! <laughs> Listen. Oof. I was like, oof. 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 Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't worry, don't worry. No, 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 we're good, we're good. Uh, what's up, everyone? Uh, clearly, if you're watching this, you know exactly who I'm sitting with, and if you're just listening to this, you know exactly who you're listening to, because you clicked on the link. Uh, but how do I do this? How do I, how do I introduce you? Because I've heard people be like, oh, the legend, and then you've rebuttaled. I need to see a legend for me to know yeah, who a legend is. I need is. to meet a legend before, it knows, before I know what it feels like to be a legend. Exactly. Well, no, you are. In a lot of people's eyes, you are a legend. Sure. You are. You are. Um, I'm going to do a quick intro for this man because clearly, well, it's not like it's super As long as you inc include Portuguese Lover, Oh, I'm shit. Good. Okay, see, I wasn't going to do Portuguese Lover, but like uh, from many songs, like from Tu E Mina, did I say that right? Tu Ej Minha. Oh, uh, Tu Ej Minha, yes. I apologize. Uh, but all Tia the Maria. Nope, not nope. that far okay. back. Okay. Uh, you are older than me, sir. I, like, <laughs> I, could, I could only do so much research yes. and... and be a part of that time. I was not. Mm -hmm. I was not. But if anything, if you don't know his newest shit, aka um, love me with the love me with the lights on. Yeah, I'm sure somebody does love you with the lights on. No. Shout out to. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did I just announce on a podcast that I, I'm seeing someone? This isn't cool. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, Sean Desmond, everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. What up? Of course. No need for applause. You know Thank I love you. you guys, man. No, I know. Right? We love you. I love you, and. I appreciate literally like the friendship that we've built. 100%. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty organic. Mm -hmm. And you've been good people since day one of stopping you at that studio after you just finished <laughs> yes, the Yes, I remember shoot. that day. Yeah. You caught me. You You're caught well, me that exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. And it was great. It was like the beginning of a beautiful thing. 100%. Right? So one, thank you. Um, one, I want to quickly shout out one, Chantel, obviously, your wife. Yes. Um, a lot has happened over the years mm -hmm. uh, where you went kind of MIA for good reason in yep. your own right. Uh, and then we also want to shout out Drake for, you know, having, having Kick, help out. Kicking my ass, bro. Yeah. Like putting, like lighting the fire under my ass, 100%. Yeah, like the resurgence was necessary. Um, seeing you come back was like having the girl that got away come back into your life and you never knew that you were missing that thing until wow. they make that entrance and I gotta say you were definitely needed not even just in the Canadian music industry but just in the music industry in general wow. like if there was this void for me because again I grew up on you mm -hmm. I grew up with your stuff I grew up with listening to someone say T dot all the time right. we're rocking in the T dot mm -hmm. uh, now it's the six so shout yes. out to Drake for also yes. that but shout out to another reason why you're here and I've heard you talk about it on plenty of podcasts or interviews, therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, talk me through one why you went to therapy. Do you recommend therapy still for, for most people or for all people? Like, where are you at with that? Yeah, I mean, I went to therapy because I was just not, I didn't feel like I was in a good place. Mm -hmm. I was kind of like in a dark place after, you know, being outside of music and kind of like feeling uh, abandoned yeah. by the music industry. Um, and it was the one thing that I had done my entire life that it was taken away from me. Yeah. And uh, it was very difficult um, because I had, I had sacrificed so much for that. Um, you know, time away from my family and my kids and friends. And I worked really, really hard. Yeah. Um, so... What ended up happening, uh, what ended up starting happening, was um, my, the feelings I was having and the darkness mm -hmm. was starting to affect my relationship with, with Chantel, with my wife, mm -hmm. and with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't feel like I was the best version of myself. And I didn't want to do that to my kids. Yeah. I wanted to be, listen, I was brought up in a loving household, mm -hmm. but I wanted to, I want to be better than what my parents, and I made that, I hope that's not a shitty thing to no, say. No, I don't think it's a shitty thing to say. Um, I think it's going to be a real thing to yeah, say. Yeah, I wanted to be, I want to be better than my parents. Yep. And not to say that my, my parents were great. Of course. I want to be better than my parents. I want my kids to talk to me about their feelings, about stuff they're going through. I didn't have that when I was growing up. I mm -hmm. grew up in a household where we didn't really come home and say I had a bad day yeah. and oh my God, I'm sad. Yeah. It was just, I came home, I was sad, 
I did my homework and I went to sleep. Yep. It, it just, that's what it was. Um, so Chantel finally was like, you know, it's either you go get help or like, she's like, I can't, I can't be with you like this. Yep. So, you know, uh, I was like, well, I know I love my wife and I love, I, I know I love my kids. So I want to get better and I want to be better. So mm -hmm. I started seeing somebody twice a week mm -hmm. for an hour. Uh, and honestly, the beginning was kind of weird Yeah. because you don't really know, like, do I tell this person everything? Yeah. Do I kind of just give him the half ass story? Um, but he was very straightforward, like right at the beginning, he's like, you need to be open with me and tell me everything or else this is not going to work. You're wasting your time yep. and you're wasting your money, quite frankly. Yep. Right. He's like, that's cool. I'll sit here and you can tell me a bunch of shit that is just fluff. But yep. like, if you really want help, you got to give me the real. So yeah, yeah. told him about all that. And also like, and my wife will speak to this. Communication is not my strong suit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I feel you on that. Yeah, so I had to, I told them, I'm like, I have trouble communicating, okay? Outside of these feelings that I have, I have trouble communicating, I need help. Um, and so he, he did this thing to me and he said this one thing and it really fucking, like, it, it hit home. And I was like, holy shit, that's so simple. Where he grabbed a sheet of paper, rolled mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. I, did you hear this? Yep. Did I tell you this? Maybe everybody else didn't hear it, but um, it was like, grab the sheet of paper. Yeah. And he's like, I'm pulling you, okay? I'm, this, I'm the fear of communication, mm -hmm. and I'm pulling you. And right in front of you, there's this dark hole. Mm -hmm. And I'm pulling you into this hole. What are you going to do? And I'm like, Doc, I have no idea what, I have no idea. He's like, come on, yeah. John. I'm pulling you. I'm fear, and you're going to fall in this hole. What are you going to do about the fear? What are you going to do with this fear? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. And he's like, just let go. And I was like, holy shit. Asshole, you could have just told me that. You beginning. asshole. <laughs> um, and that had such an impact. Uh, and I tell that story all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my journey. I did that for a couple of years. Listen, I'm still not perfect. I'm yeah. still a work in progress. But do I recommend therapy? Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody that feels a certain way or if you feel you're starting to fade away into this dark place mm -hmm. and like you're having thoughts that are just not good um i feel like everybody should see a therapist yep i feel like when you turn 30 you should just go talk to somebody oh 100 right um and i think it's so important and i tell my friends i'm a good listener yeah and i love listening to to you speak and your feel but i'm not a professional yeah and like i have my own shit i'm dealing with and like, like, listen, <laughs> it's funny because I, 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 I get that fully. Like I'm the friend that people come to, but then I don't really have a person that I could, and yeah. let alone whether you have a partner, whether you have really close friends, or I can easily just talk to random people off the street. They're not professionals. No, no, no. And you can't expect them to be. Yep. Right. But the trauma dumping that happens when you're that guy or you're that person that people look at yep. and they're like, wow, you're like this pillar of light. Sure, to most, but like I still don't know how to process my own stuff. My, yeah. my own shit is fucking nuts up here. And it's funny because nobody, like if I didn't tell people any of this, they would never know. Yeah. Because I am just, everybody calls me a, a ray of sunshine. Yep. When I walk into a room, yep. I'm just a ray of sunshine. Mm -hmm. I'm positive, I'm smiling, mm -hmm. I'm, and you would never know um, if I didn't tell you that I went through these things. Yeah. You know, and, and, and still going through, um, stuff with family and stuff it's just i feel like it's just never ending yeah. but what i am better at dealing with stuff mm -hmm. and i've come to the realization that other people's shit can't always be my shit correct right i got my own fucking shit yeah so i have to like really learn how to separate the two and be like listen i'm here and i'm gonna listen to you mm -hmm. um but like you you need to go get help yeah because but you, this, your shit just can't be my shit all the time mm -hmm. you know what i mean so oof. that was a lot yeah but that was good yeah obviously being a father uh how do you process these things with your kids i know i'm gonna group us in a generation so in our generation we didn't get that my family was never like hey uh are you okay how are you really is 
is is life okay? How's school? It's never. It's you come home and you do your shit, yep. and then you go to bed. If you're sad, you're sad. You hopefully wake up not sad anymore. Yeah. Um, I know for a fact with my kids, I ask them questions. I talk to them because I I kind of yearned for it as a child, but I knew that I couldn't go to my immigrant family and expect them to understand the things that I was going through. And maybe they did understand, but in my head, I'm like, you you don't get it. You wouldn't get it. You would never get it. How are you with your kids and how do you how do you communicate with them? And I know you're very open with them, but obviously you have what, three kids? Three kids. And they vary from the ages of 15 to eight. Yeah. So like very different where my 15 year old is like, he's the teenager now and like, he's doing his own thing. Yeah. Right. But I still, I make it a point every day I walk in and he's on the couch. I usually get home after they're done school and I'm like, Hey, how how was your, how was your day at school? Yeah. You know, what's going on? (laughs) The answers are usually very short and quick. I'm just like, good shot, bud. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, 100%. Um, But that's just a teenager. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my middle son, Owen, is very emotional. Um, and he plays soccer, like very serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, they lose a the game. He, ta- he really takes it. He's the captain of the team and he takes it really to oh, heart. Shit. And he gets in the car and he's crying. And I always tell him, I'm like, you know, Owen, you can only do your best, bud. Yep. You know, and I know, like, you love it and you're upset. And, like, I want you to cry and I want you mm-hmm. to talk to me. Um, I tell them all the time. I'm like, you, I, tell, I tell all of them, you can tell me anything at any point. Yeah. Me or mom, you come to us, yeah. you know? Um, my daughter is like, you know, her father can do no wrong. Like yeah. she's, she, I mean, listen, kids love their parents, but like my daughter and me, like there's a special bond yeah. and relationship. Um, is she annoying sometimes? A hundred percent. But there's just something there and even with her, but she's very she comes and like talks to me and um, is very open about her feelings. She has big feelings, we call mm-hmm. it at home. Um, so yeah, I like to, I, I, we always encourage them to you know, speak their feelings, come talk to us. And even me, I am not afraid to show emotion in front of my children. Yeah. I remember specifically one day when, after we did Maniac, um, and like I'm finding out, I'm getting like, the Young and Dundas Square billboard, Spotify billboard and all this stuff and all these great things are happening. But meanwhile, my wife is at home recovering from this mm. life-changing surgery and mm-hmm. things are very hard. And I remember come walking in the house and sitting down beside her on the couch and just losing it. Mm. We were all there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, she's, and she thought, she's like, what's, oh my God, what's wrong? What happened? And I said, nothing is wrong. Nothing happened. I'm like, just so many great things happening. And I just want you to be healthy and, and to enjoy these things with me, yep. you know? Um, so I, I mean, I still get super emotional thinking about that. And like even recently with, you know, love me with the lights on and just all the support from everybody who submitted for the video as, long, as well as the influencers that were like literally, I, I'd never met these people before. And mm-hmm. I, I see them at an event and I say, hey, Alicia McCarvel, yep. I want you, I'm shooting a music video. And I, I, she knew nothing. And I said, do you want to be in it? She's like, yep. Tell right. me when, tell me where. Yep. Same thing with Birds Papaya. Sarah was just like, yep, I'm in. Tell me where. Yep. Like the support and everything. And then just like everything around that and the messages that I continue to get from people. Um, you know, I was at the grocery store the other day and the lady behind the deli counter literally looked at me and was like, and I was like, for what? And um, she pulled me aside and she said, I, I just thank you for that song and that video because I feel seen. Yeah. And, um, oh, shit. Goosebumps. Fuck. And I was like, wow, so my, can I give you a hug? Like, you know, uh, and that's what it's about. And I, I tell my team all the time, like, I want to impact people's yeah. lives. I don't fucking care about awards. Yep. And, you know, they're, it's great. Yep. Don't get me wrong, but like imp- impacting people's lives and making a difference. That's where I am at in my life. Yep. That's what I want people to remember me for. Um, so whatever I do, I make sure is in line with that mission. Mm-hmm. Um, why are you making me cry again, bro? I'm not trying to, Fuck. but it's a natural thing. Look, you, you said it yourself, you're comfortable with crying, whether it's from a strangers, whether it's from a family, your kids more specifically, 
right? And that's a beautiful thing. I wish I cried a little bit more in front of my kids, uh, but when they do catch it, they catch it in terms of catch me crying, not catch it. Uh, but when they catch it, it's like they, they, re they realize that dad is going through something, mm -hmm. uh, good or bad, doesn't matter. they don't know what it is specifically, but he's going through something, so let's just be here. And I think that's the, that's the only thing, at least for me, that I ever ask for my kids. It's like, if you see me going through some shit, I'm not, I don't, I don't need you to console me. Mm. I just, I want you to understand when we have conversations that we all have emotions, we all go through things. It doesn't matter how old you get, how young you are, we all feel these certain things. So showing it is probably the best way to understand it versus trying to be a mind reader. Yeah, my daughter is the best, man. Like, uh, Chantel walked in a fashion show uh, which highlighted Crohn's and colitis yep. and ostomy bags. Yep. And Sienna, I'm sitting there and I'm crying and she knows, and she, she knows. She puts her arm around me, puts her head on my shoulder, but like, fuck, like, yeah. Kids, man. Yeah. Kids. I'm going to wrap up the portion of therapy. I want to ask, are you still going? Do you still do therapy? <clears throat> and if not, or like, do you? Do I don't, you I'm, not, I'm, st I, I'm not there currently. Okay. However, I have two or three friends who I've suggested, uh, and they're going to the same, the same guy that I went to and yep. are like, dude, life changing, yeah. life changing. I'm like, I told you guys, yeah. like I'm telling you. I mean, I think at some point I'm going to need like a brush up, yep. you know, um, especially after this last year and everything that's happened. I'm, I'm stable now, I feel good. Yeah. Um, but I think I will have to go in for a, a tuning at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to like... Recenter yourself. Recenter, yeah. But I'm, I'm okay right now. And I'm okay because of the people around me. Yeah. Um, just my team is incredible and they're supportive of all those things. Yep. They're like, and that's so great to have people that like are supportive of you being, of me being yeah. the person that I am. This is... What you see is what you get. Yep. You know, there's, it's black and white. It's not yeah. gray. There's no gray area, you know? Well, the crazy thing, again, is that the person in the grocery store, this is now. You've impacted them now. But, like, also imagine, the, for, like, myself, being a young Filipino kid in, in elementary school, seeing this person, I'm impacted then. And you've had different generations. And you're, like, when I say you're a generational artist, I mean that with all, all due respect of, yeah, you, like, do I see you as the Michael Jackson just yet? No, like when people use the accolades of generational artists, yeah. there's different pillars. But when I see you as a generational figure <clears throat> of a person that I want to aspire to be like, especially on the mental health side, mm -hmm. right? That's so open, that's so freely talking about how he feels, right? It doesn't always have to be a good day because no. it's not always a good day. No, no, no. We all have bad days, right? You have, and I believe that from 2002 to whenever you disappeared after that, to let's say 2012 or 2010. 2014, 15 actually. And then up until now, the amount of people that you have helped, right, impacted, and it doesn't have to be a lot, right? I think the mission really is, if one person can find benefit in the things that I'm saying, 100%. right, yeah. that makes the world of difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like you said, it's so great because People who were fans in, you know, 2003, 2004, 2005 now have kids who are also fans. Yeah. That's like crazy to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'm just so blessed, man, and so grateful. I had a, an amazing summer performing yes, yes, across the did. country, like to tens of thousands of people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was like, holy shit, did I fucking ever miss this? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was so great. And it's, you know, I was talking to, uh, I was doing an interview on Sirius Radio, and uh, the host, she said something also that was very, very, just, I was just like, holy shit. She was, you know, she said, Sean, you weren't gone. We were just waiting. Yeah. 100% true. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I guess people like me. I guess people, I guess people like, like me. I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, that's why I, I, I just don't, I don't look at myself as a legend or as something. I'm just a guy that makes music that people like. I just want to be a good person. Just want to um, do good. You know, you're only as cool as you treat people, man. Yeah. And like, that's, that's just, it's just me. I'm just a normal dude. And I tell everybody, like, if you see me on the street, you see me doing grocery, you see me whatever, 
please come and say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please come and take a picture. Like, because without these people, I am nothing. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think artists forget that. Yeah. I can see that. Not with all artists, but... No, I no, no. That. Some yeah. artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they forget that. And you can't forget that. It's... Without the, without the fans, you're nothing. Correct. Correct. So... Going back to the point of you letting people say, hey, can I take a picture with you, noticing you outside, what's the difference between when you first started, and it doesn't have to go back to when you just were a Portuguese artist, mm -hmm. but even, what's the difference between those eras? And where were you at in those times? So were you very accepting and very receptive of people hailing you down on the street um, back then as you probably are now? Like, we're, talk me through that. I was, uh, I still am, but uh, so, at the time, I was working with uh, a manager who wasn't so much like that. Mm -hmm. Where, like, I remember a couple of times us like sitting down having dinner somewhere, and people coming up and like him getting like really mad. Yeah, he's like, "But he's eating." I'm like, "Dude, I don't care. Yeah. Like, it's fine. Yeah, chill out." Um, but I've I've always been that way. You know, I've never felt like too cool for school or. I mean, it's just like, it's just the person I am. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I just like people. I like yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Most people. <laughs> am I one of them at least? Are we one you of them? You are. Perfect. Peace Collective, 100%. Yeah. Hey, that's us. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have a memorable, whether fan or just interaction uh, throughout the course of the years that, go, that, that, that speaks to you? It's like, damn, that shit was amazing. They were actually really nice. Or damn, uh, they were too much, but I like that. You mean like fan-wise? Fan-wise. Ooh, want me to tell you a story? Please. So, I believe it was like 2000, when I had the sidewalk haircut. So Love it. 2005. Do, 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 do. Yep. yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was at Fairview Mall doing a show, I believe, mm -hmm. slash autograph signing, and a father and a kid come up for the autograph, and I've, you know, I've never told this story in a public forum. So this is the first time I'm telling it. And so the father and the child come up to me and get my autograph. It's cool. They, they stuck around and waited, and the dad pulled me aside out. He's like, can I speak to you? I said, sure. And he said, okay, you see Josh? And he's like, yeah. He, I'm like, yeah, I love it. He's got my haircut. He's like, so Josh is in going through chemotherapy right now, and he was losing all his hair. Sure. And said he wanted to cut his hair like Sean Desmond, so kids wouldn't make fun of him. And I was like, wow, I'm like, incredible. So me being the person that I am, I developed a relationship with Josh and his yeah. family. And uh, Josh was really sick and I would go to his house and I would play with him. And one day I get a phone call at four in the morning from his dad and Josh passed away. And uh, I can't imagine what, you know, he was going through. Yeah. And he asked me if I would be a pallbearer at Josh's funeral because Crazy. I had such an impact on Josh yeah. and I was one of his favorite people. Yeah. And I was like, of course, Victor, yeah. I will do that for you. And, uh, you know, I still keep in touch with, he has two other sons and I still keep in touch with them. And he reaches out and he always, you know, tells me how proud he is of me and how proud Josh would be of me. And uh, I have never told that story because it's not really, I don't want, uh, I, I, did, like, I don't want people to think I'm telling it to gain sympathy or to yep. gain, you know, whatever. It was just something that was so special to me. And, um, oof. so that's like, for me, core memory, one of the like happiest and saddest, you know, moments of my life. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was very hard. But, you know, it's my own fault. I chose to, you know, be friends with the family and with the kid. I just, it just, I felt like I had to. And, uh, I, you know, I miss Josh. His family misses Josh. And yeah. uh, life just kicks you in the balls sometimes, yep. you know? So... Um, for me, that's like the one thing I, I, I really cherish, my relationship with Josh and him admiring me so much and being such a, uh, you know, a big fan and just everything he went through. 
So, uh, you know, there's so many other stories, but like more just, you know, normal, that typical, was the one. typical fan stuff, but that's, yep. that's the one. And that's the one that it matters. You matter, Josh matters, that whole family matters. That, that interaction had to matter because, look, he was going through a tough time and he found, not even just found, like the, you were there. Yeah. You were there, you existed. And as iconic as that hairstyle actually is, was, it means a lot more within this conversation, I think contextually to who you are as a person as well, um, for it to really go down in history as Probably one of the best cuts that you've got. <laughs> to bring it full circle, to make people you smile. Ask, people, ask, and people ask me, you can bring back the sidewalk? I'm like, probably not, bro. No, this, your, your cut right now is very, it's very suited for your age. And I, I, I rock with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, we don't talk about his age here. Sorry, Kate. No, you don't like his hair? So Sean's manager is Kate's, uh, she's in the background and she's giving me the, the cert. Who, who does this? Oh my God. Serge Ibaka does this? No, so good. like whatever, people do this. I do this too. Oh. <laughs> Each don't think so. Well, here we are. Yeah. Uh, either way, you look good. You, you look great. And, you. you know, may Josh rest in peace, the family as well. Uh, obviously, you still keep in touch with them, like mm -hmm. you said. But yeah, shout out to, shout out to that moment, because I'm sure it has changed you, not even just for the better. Like, it's, it's a humbling experience. When How old was Josh? Uh, I believe when he passed away, he may have been 10. I can't, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Can't even imagine. I have three kids of my own. I would, I mean, I guess you, you go on because they did have another boy at the time. And it's yeah. like, you have another child that yeah. you have, you know, like that needs you, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, it's uh, life. It is life. Well, thank you for that. Honestly, that was, I didn't, this whole thing, I wasn't here trying to make you cry by any means. No, I know. It's just, right? I, I knew I was going to cry at some point. No, look, listen, you know? it's, the, it's the conversations that we have. And since I've met you, I've, all I've tried to do was be open and honest within conversations because mm -hmm. that's just the type of person that I am as well. Yeah. Um, and I value, value you so much more because I resonate with a, lot of, with a lot of things that you live by, that you go for. Like, and this isn't, I'm not trying to make this a me thing where it's, you know, I push content out and I, and I make things, whether it's for Peace Collective or my own stuff, where all I want to do is put a smile on someone's face. I want to make someone's oh day. It doesn't have to be all the followers that exist. It doesn't have to reach thousands or millions of people. It really is that one person. 100%. And in that moment in time, Josh literally was that one person, yep. right? Amongst all the other people at Fairview that were there to see you, get an autograph, that was, that, that, that was the one, yep. right? So yep. shout out to that. Um, but to bring it back, I guess, to a lighter note, um, where are you at now with, oh, hold on. I don't know why I said that. God damn. What do I want to ask you? You good, bro? I don't know. You can ask me anything. How are you really? <laughs> uh, honestly, woo, right now in this moment, I'm good, man. It's, uh, everything is great. My wife is healthy. Yeah. Um, you know dad going through some stuff now yeah that you know we got to figure out uh but you know just I'm, I'm doing what i love again yeah i'm doing what i love i'm doing it with people i enjoy being with because mm -hmm. that's my one rule yeah. if i'm gonna do this and i came out i came off my fucking couch yeah. pretty much out of retirement to do this yeah. i'm gonna do it on my terms mm -hmm. because that's just the way it's gonna be yeah um so I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm, re I'm really good. You know, again, life sometimes throws you a curveball and I'm just like, day by day, take it as it comes. Don't stress about shit that has not happened yet. Yeah. Can't control everything. And just like enjoy and like really cherish the time you have with the people that you love. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. just like that, you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. Not to assume where your mental health is at right now, but where is it? Because considering you not going to a therapist anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you said you want to do a checkup sooner or later. Where is it at now? Would you say you're pretty good? What, what, like, what are days like for you now? No, I'm pretty good. I'm good. Um, again, because, because of what I learned in therapy and where before I would bottle, 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 bottle up. Mm -hmm. Now I'll go home and like tell my wife yeah. and I won't bottle it up. Yeah. And then she'll talk to me. 
Um, so that that makes a world of difference. But before it was just like everything's in here, and then boom, yeah, you you just fucking explode, yeah, right. Um, so no, I'm I'm in a I'm in a good place. Um, it's still important, yep, you know. Um, but I feel like right now I'm stable. I'm I'm good. I'm loving this ride that I'm on, um, and I'm just I'm gonna just ride it until I can't ride it no more. Through all the experiences that you've had over the years, whether it's within the music industry or just life in general, um, is there one thing that you would change, um, whether again, whether it's the beginning of your career or even up until now, is there anything that you would change or do differently? <sighs> I sometimes say, so when I was maybe like 20, I, like I would already, I was already doing stuff. I was yep. already a pop star here. Yep. Uh, I was being asked to like move to LA and because they're like, you have to be here. Mm -hmm. This is, everything happens here. Mm -hmm. You need to be here. People need to see you. Hollywood, the Hollywood. industry. You need to be here. I was already with Chantel at the time, mm -hmm. my family, Chantel had a business. And I was like, I can't just up, up and leave. leave. So, no, I can't, I can't move. Like, I, I have to be here. Um, and regret, again, is a strong word. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, I, I often think like, if I did that, maybe things would be a little bit different, right? Um, but I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Of course. Right? So that's kind of like one thing, like, because when the time that I did spend there, it was good and I was meeting people and things were kind of happening, but then, mm -hmm. As soon as you leave, they forget, right? I always came this close to like major US record deal, like I'm talking like so close. And then it just like always something at fucking the 11th hour. And mm. It never happened. And I, this story is told a million times because yeah. I know people like that have gone through the same thing as I have. Um, you just gotta like stay on it, believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, stay on path. Yeah. And uh, yeah, world, the world's a big place. So like everybody asks me, so are you going on tour in the US? And I'm like, no, I'm not. And, like, I'm not, I have no reason to go there yeah. right now. Um, but like, I would take like blowing up in Europe or in another, another country, you know what I mean? Like wherever people want me, yeah. that's where I'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But also shout out to the internet now oh my, versus dude. where it was back then. Well, and this is, this is another thing. I feel like when, you know, when I was having all that huge monster success in the beginning, if we were today, it'd be a different story. Yeah. Because anybody in the world can hear your music right now. Yeah. That was, you had to go to a store and buy a CD yep. in 2002, mm -hmm. right? So if you didn't go, and like, or if they weren't printing or sending your CDs out to that territory, nobody was hearing you. Yeah, you'd have to wait for radio time if there was radio now, play. Sean Desmond, yeah. there it is. Yeah. Like, it's a whole new, it's a, it's a new world. And I feel like, I always say, if I was just coming out today and having, you know, as a new artist and with that success, I feel like it'd be a different day for me. But I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not complaining because I've had an amazing career, mm -hmm. continue to have an amazing career. Yeah. After 20 plus years. Um, so, I, you know, I don't want people to hear that and say like, oh, this guy's bitter. I'm not bitter. Mm -hmm. in, You're not. In the slightest. I'm happy. I'm super happy right now. If you've ever been on set with this band, the, no bitterness. No. There is no salt. There is no. the happiest. Just smart ass comments. Oh, 100%. Right? I love smart ass comments. It's the greatest thing. So to not wrap it up just yet, social media, we talked about it. You're killing it right now on TikTok. <laughs> it's my favorite platform I'm trying. Shout out to TikTok. Trying. It. And it's not just you. Mm -hmm. You have folded the family into the yeah. in, into the whole thing. Why? Why? I, I I found I learned something about uh, TikTok really fast. I feel like TikTok is a community of people, mm -hmm. support, mainly supportive people. Mm -hmm. Different than the other platforms, mm -hmm. I find. So everybody kept saying like, we want 
to see the real Shaw. Yeah. Don't give us like the shit that you want people to see all the time or whatever. Like we want to see the real Sean. So I was like, well, how do you see the real Sean? You got to see the, my wife and my kids mm -hmm. and how we interact and mm -hmm. what happens at home. Um, and just so happened that people like dancing on TikTok. Oh, 100%. Uh, my wife's a dancer. I noticed. Yo, Chantel can boogie. Yo, she's a dancer. She's a better dancer than I am. I can tell. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. And your daughter is killing it too. Yeah, she's a dancer. As so well. It runs in the jeans. Um, sure. So it's only natural that we do that, right? Yeah. And it's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, no, it doesn't look fake. You guys, <laughs> no. one, you're killing it. Yeah, it's not. The authenticity behind the dance moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The purpose behind the moves. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. It's, you're right. It's authentic. It's not like... I'm, we're not teaching each other how to this dance. This isn't counts. We're, we're no, not just doing it based off counts. We're dancers, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So that's why I find like why I brought them into the fold because they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, people want to see me, but they want to get, they really want to like feel a part of the journey. Yeah. And I, I really find that with TikTok and I love that. Um, so I've tried, kind of been making it a thing like every Saturday we, we film a dance video nice. and I post it on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like our new thing that we do. Is that also something you could probably consider like your little mental health break, just to bring some joy and happiness to something and then just show it to the world? Or is there something else that you possibly do on the side? I know people do like mental health walks. Uh, they I go to the gym, things. dude. Yeah? The gym is my release. So I work out seven days a week. Damn. When I, there, the days I don't go to the gym, I'm off. Yeah. And my wife knows, like, I'm off. Yeah. Um, that's my release. That's my, I go to the gym for, you know, I'm, two hours, whatever you want to call it. And like, fresh, I get my, you know, my juices, go, my juices flowing. Uh, and, you know, it's my release. It's my outlet. Yeah. Um, not only for my body, but I, I'm, of course I want to be healthy, but also for my brain, man. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I go there and I do my thing for a couple hours and I don't got to think about anything else. Yeah. When I'm at the gym, it's don't, this. don't answer the phone. It's like, it's this. So that's my thing, but I know like other people, they yeah, go for hikes and go for mental health walks and do, but the gym is my thing. That's your thing? Yeah. Love it. All right, so this is where we tie it up and this is the, my favorite part of this whole thing that I do. Uh, typically, I would do word association or something association to a thing. Last conversation I had with uh, Dominic Gabriel, I don't know if you know Dom Gabriel, mm -hmm. but if you do uh, watch Netflix, um, we did, give me, give me an emotion. I, I threw an emotion at you or a feeling and give me a song of your choice that can associate Ooh, to that. Okay. But in this case, we're gonna do it a little bit different. We're gonna do it where I'm gonna show, Mark over here is gonna show you a picture. Okay. And give me the first feeling and or emotion that comes to mind. Uh, obviously with it, uh, like after post, you'll see the images cause you can't see it now. Uh, but I want you to give me the first feeling and or emotion that comes to mind when you see these pictures. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Mark, can you? Embarrassed. Embarrassed? Why? Uh, it's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the tight shirt. It's the tight red shirt. Uh -huh. it's, it's fucking red. But the it, hair. The hair. I mean, that was, uh, it's, it's iconic. It is. I remember going to Germany um, and like all the guys having the haircut. Um, and also, Drake posted that picture. Yeah. So before OVO. Uh huh. It's like months before, maybe even a year before the OVO show, he posted that and the caption was like, they talk like, it was something like they talk like we put Toronto on the map, but they must have forgot about SD. And the thing is, I couldn't tell if he was making fun of me because of the shirt <laughs> or if he was being serious. And everybody was like, no, he's being, he was, everybody I spoke That's to, that knew, they're like, he's being serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also that chain though. Man, the SD chain, I still got that chain. I wanted to... You just mentioned it too late. Yeah, I know. I I'm sorry. Brought, I would have brought it today. Kate's shaking her head. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's all okay. right. All right. Next one. Oof. Emotion? Yeah. Intense. Intense. Why? The, the gaze, the haircut, it's like Astro Boy. <laughs> yeah. But it's like an evolved version of what, no, th what you have right now is the evolved version of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That wasn't my favorite haircut. What was your favorite haircut? Uh, I mean, my favorite haircut is like when I had my, shit, had, had my head shaved because you don't got to do shit to it. 
Shout out to Mark being bald. Ha 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 The other the other piece collective guy. I'm bald telling head, you. Love it. Easy. The problem was going to the barber shop and sitting there all Saturday waiting for a lineup because those barbers like to talk, man. Yeah, it's a barber shop. It's a real thing. It's the culture. Now you can make an appointment though. Exactly. So it's different. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Next photo, please. Ooh. You wow. See with the G unit. Wow. You know what I mean? So tell us tell us about this, Sean. Um, <laughs> Um, actually, this makes me happy, man. Yeah. Um, Why again? So this was, I was in a movie. My name was Trey in the movie. And the movie was called How She Move. Mm -hmm. It was a stepping movie, step nice. dancing. Nice. Uh, shot here in Hamilton, actually. Um, and I got to meet, meet a lot of great people. So first time I worked with uh, Director X, actually. Um, oh, he shot it. He shot part of that part of the film. Um, it was just a ton of fun. It was like three months of like everyday rehearsing and then shooting for a month. Um, and again, just met great people. And it was, it was funny because it was in between like uh, my album with Let's Go and like Red Hair mm -hmm. and Electric, Night Like This and Shiver. So I was in kind of like a transitional yeah. phase where like, I don't know what I'm supposed to look like for this next album. Yeah. So, but they want me to look like this for the movie, apparently. So we'll deal with this for now. So we'll deal with this for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll deal with this chain and this G unit shirt tank top real quick. Love it. Oh my God, so funny. Perfect. Next one, please. Who is this? Wow. Where'd you get that? Listen, Google's a crazy place. The internet's wild. Wow. This makes me feel proud. Proud. Um, Oh, you want to come and see it? Uh, just because, like, not a lot of people uh, don't know the backstory and, like, how this all really started for me. And this is, uh, I believe, my second Portuguese album that I put, I put out. Uh, now digas now means don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Shout out to Justin Bieber would never say never. Yes, right? Being the original uh, Portuguese Justin Bieber. So this is don't say no. Don't say no. When Sean walks in the room, don't, don't say, say no. Back. My wife never says no, by the way. Listen. I'm lying. She does. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> That's how we love you. Um, yeah, no. this makes me feel proud. It, makes me, it brings me back to, like, my roots, where I started from. Um, and grateful as well yeah. to still be here. I was like, I think I was 10 years old there. Yeah, yeah you've been in this industry for, for a really yeah. long, time. long time. Long time. Long time. Mark, next, please. Goofy. Why? So why don't I have shoes on? Listen, it's a hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Well, let's go back to. Uh, First I, of all, I'm, at, I'm in like a locker room. Okay. Why don't I have shoes on? What am I doing right now? Look, th this brings up a conversation that we had earlier uh, where you did your premiere for uh, Love Me With The Lights On. <laughs> uh, where, you know, you're like, hey y'all, thank you for showing up. Michael Jackson tee, some shorts, showing them quads, and then flip flops. This is me, man. <laughs> I don't. So that is you. I, yeah, okay, fair. I don't, I don't care. Like, that's how I felt comfortable. That, that's how I yeah. wanted to dress that day. No, 100%. Right? And we love that. I love that. But this was actually my first English single that we mm -hmm. put out. So before I was signed to a major label, small independent label, put it out. Had some radio play here and whatnot, but like after this really, really dug into like my uh, songwriting and really practicing and working on that and my production. And that led me to like getting my record deal with BMG in, to, in, in 2000. I was in Sweden for 9-11 making my album. Wild. Crazy, right? Watching it on Witnessing TV. Witnessing everything happening on real time. Yeah. 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 Being like, are we going to fucking be able to go yeah. home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's happening right now? Yeah. And I believe the last one. Mm. Joy. Joy. Joy and happiness. And wow. love. That's my world in one picture, man. Mm -hmm. And just uh, everything we've gone through, me and Chantel, me and Chantel met, I was 12, she was 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember seeing her for the first time, and I tell this to people, they think I'm nuts. We met at our dance studio where we grew up dancing together, and I remember her coming out of the dance studio and me walking in uh, 
to the room and she came out and I, in my head I said, I'm going to marry that girl. And we got married. And you got married. We had three amazing kids, so smart and just, yeah, it's my life and what, my joy, happiness, life, love in one picture. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you. You're welcome. With that being said, Sean, thank you very much. I love you guys, man. Thank you so I much. Love you as well, brother. Thank you, Peace Collective. Peace, y'all. Thank you.